Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, we find Buzz and Happy in a relay communication station in space at the mercy of Jim Colmar, who's in league with a strange alien power. Using some mysterious crystals, Colmar is forcing Buzz and Happy to obey him against their will. Come, follow me into the generator room. Commander, the crystals are getting brighter. That's all I can see or think about, just the crystal. Try to look away, Happy. Fight it. Keep walking. Up to the generator. Closer. Closer. Fight it, Happy. Touch the connections. Reach out your hands. Happy, don't touch it. I I can't hold back. You've got to. If you touch it, you're finished. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Seed Crystals of Zelda Brand. <laughs> This is Space Patroller Dick Tufeld, gang, and boy, am I excited. We have a new machine here at Space Patrol headquarters, and it's terrific. It's called the Flavor Meter. It's used for testing the flavor of food. Now, I have a plain, ordinary cereal right here, so let's test it. The better it tastes, the louder it'll ring the bell. All I do is put the cereal in this slot and push the button. Hmm, not much flavor there, is there? I suppose we put in some other ordinary cereals. Well, not even a tinkle. Now, here's a couple of super cereals I'd like to test. I'll put them both in. Wow, that did it. Those cereals really ring the bell for flavor. You bet. They were Rice Checks and Wheat Checks. Checks, the cereals with that modern bite-sized design. Checks, the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. Test them yourself, gang, in your own cereal bowl. Believe me, they'll really ring the bell for flavor. Rice checks, wheat checks. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, the seed crystals of Zaldebran. Swinging in a wide orbit around the planet Saturn is the artificial satellite COM Relay 4, the powerful communications relay center. Serious trouble between two men assigned to duty at the space station has brought Commander Corey and Cadet Happy to investigate. With their ship, Terra 5, joined to the airlock of Calm Relay 4, Buzz and Happy are now opening the inner lock of the huge disc-shaped relay station. Go ahead, Happy. Yes, sir. Welcome aboard, Commander. Oh, Ma, you look as though you haven't any sleep for two days. Oh, it's been nearer three, sir. I've been working both shifts. Why didn't you report this dispute between Siler and yourself immediately? I should be able to handle my own assistant. I don't like to yell to the top breast for help. Where is Siler? Uh, he took a swing at me, so I had to lock him up. He's back here. All right, let's find out what this is all about. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. He's in here. All right, Komar, if you'll wait for us in the control room. Happy and I will have a talk with Sila. Yes, Commander. I hope you can straighten him out. All right, Happy, open the door. Yes, sir. Well, Sila, let's hear your version of the story. Didn't Komar tell you I swung at him? Yes. Okay. I assaulted the superior. Why go into it any further? Close the door, Happy. Yes, sir. Sila, I know your record. You've worked these two-man teams for years. I find it hard to believe you suddenly went space happy and struck Jim Colmar. Now, let's have the whole story. We got along all right at the beginning. But lately, Colmar's been unreasonable. He races his rockets over every little thing. And you don't feel that you've done anything to antagonize him? No, sir. When was the first blow-up? A couple of days after the meteor hit us. Meteor? It was just a little one, about the size of a marble. We patched up the hole in the hull and everything was okay. Then one day I walked into the control room to relieve him a little early. It was a favor, see, and he, he jumped down my throat. What did he say to you? Said he was tired of my sneaking up behind him. He kept his hand clutched around something as though he were afraid I'd steal it. And acted like a spoiled kid. Was that when you swung at him? No, it was later. He kept finding fault with everything I did. So I finally blew up. I swung wild and he connected. 
I was a little surprised. I didn't think Comar had it in him. Now, Siler, you're relieved from duty. I'm taking you back to Terra. But first, I want a written report from Jim Colmar. Commander, I just put Bob Siler aboard the spaceship for Venus. Oh, a few weeks in the rest camp at Lake Gaja will fix him up all right. He certainly was grateful to you for not entering that row with Colmar as a black mark on his record. I'm putting it down as a flare-up of temperament due to confinement and strain. Actually, beginning to think Colmar could do with the rest at Lake Gaja, too. Oh, by the way, sir, the applicant for duty at uh, Com Relay is waiting to see you. His name is uh, Jack Perkins. All right, happy show, man. The commander will see you now, Mr. Perkins. Thanks, Cadet. Good morning, Commander. Well, sit down, Perkins. Thank you, sir. So you want to be assigned to duty at Saturn Com Relay 4, huh? That's right. Do you know who's in charge there? Sure, Jim Colmar. Best space of engineer in the solar system. Mm, I won't argue with you there. But you had a serious dispute with him about four years ago. And he had you court-martialed. Oh, I had it coming. I've learned a lot since then, Commander. There won't be any more trouble. You'll be notified of my decision. Thank you, sir. Believe me, I want this assignment more than I've wanted anything before in my life. Well, goodbye, sir. I'll um, wait until I hear from you. Oh, oh. oh that's okay. Oh, Commander. Yes, Robbie. May I see you a minute, sir? Yes, certainly. I've been getting more complaints about Saturn Com Relay 4. Well, what is it now? Saturn and Neptune channels are weak, but Comar is feeding a wild beam out into space 40 degrees west of Pluto. He's sending gibberish where there aren't any planets or space lanes. And he's probably groggy from lack of sleep. You've got to get him an assistant right away. He's put in a request for a specific man. Came through the private channel about an hour ago. Oh, who does he want? Guy who just left here? Jack Perkins. Hmm. Well, I'm either putting a lion and a tiger into a cage together, or I'm helping to restore a beautiful friendship. You mean you're going to okay Perkins' appointment? We need a man out there quickly, and I feel we should send a man of Colmer's choice. Yes, sir. See that Jack Perkins gets in the next space patrol transport to Saturn. Thanks for asking for me, Colmar. Strange, isn't it? Am I getting a hunch to apply for the assignment just at this time? No, oh, it may not be as strange as you think, Jack. We'll get along fine, I'm sure of that. Sure we will. <laughs> there I was, wasting my time on Mars, when all of a sudden I thought of you. <laughs> uh, here's the control room. Wow. Say, you sure got this thing fixed up. Where'd you promote all this extra equipment? I'll tell you someday. For the time being... Well, I'd just say this isn't standard for a com relay station of this size. I'll say not. Jim, you, you've got something in this room. Something strange and magnetic. Something behind the amplifier. I knew it. The crystal. Yes. You have one too, haven't you? Yes, I, I've got it with me, but but yours is a much larger crystal. Where'd you get it? It crashed through the hull of a station a few weeks ago. For a time being, I was afraid my assistant would examine it. I told him it was a meteorite, and he seemed satisfied. Well, this one fell at my feet when I was <coughs> hiking across a plane on Mars. Mysterious, isn't it? Yeah. It, it even seems to be trying to tell me something. To tell me where it's from. From a world far away. Beyond the solar system. Zaldebran, perhaps? Yes, Zaldebran. What does it mean, Jim? It means we have been selected from all the people of the solar system to guide the invaders. The liberators from Zaldebran. I don't quite understand. You will. Probably millions of these crystals were fired out into space. In all directions from Zaldebran. Just on the chance that one or two might come to rest on an inhabited planet. But, Jim, are the crystals alive? No, not in the usual sense. But they vibrate in sympathy with the life force of the men of Zaldebran. That's how they communicate with us. Project the thoughts of these men. You've learned all this from the crystal? Yes. And we must keep these crystals a secret from everyone. Those are the orders. Yes, I know. All who have the crystal will be brought together, as we were. 
Only by working in secret can we guide our masters here. The conquerors from Zaldebrand. Come, we got work to do. Commander. Oh, yes, Riley. Something's got to be done about Comrade A4. Isn't that mess straightened out yet? Oh, it's improved a little since Perkins arrived. But our message center is still four hours behind schedule in clearing communications to Pluto. Due to Comrade A4, Major? Yeah. Pluto reports signal strength is weak from Relay Center. We've run the code tape through twice. Have Coma or Perkins given any explanation? None that makes any sense. Well, I'll get some sense out of them. Robbie, beam all outer planet spacephone signals through Jupiter Com Relay 3. Right, sir. Happy and I are blasting off for Com Relay 4 to find out what Perkins and Coma are doing. The crystals are gleaming brighter, Komar. Yes. I'm using their pulsations to modulate the spacephone signal. It's amazing that a crystal can absorb the thoughts and feelings of a human being and then emit those vibrations to make us understand. Yes. If crystals hadn't sensed that we were friendly, they probably would have remained cold lumps of mineral. They know their friends, these crystals. And they know their enemies. Look, their light is fading. The crystals are warning us. Quick! Disconnect them from the modulator while I check the space of Right, Comer. Someone must be coming. And just when I felt that we were about to contact Zelda Brand. Look, they're on the view scope. A spaceship? Yes, a space patrol battle cruiser, Terra 5. It's Commander Corey, and he's heading right for the station. Those messages. We should have diverted more power to the regular signals instead of pouring it all towards Zelda Brand. Corey may be suspicious. The crystal will protect us. We'll let Corey aboard the space station. If that's what he wants. But hold on to your crystal. Let it guide you. And whatever the crystal tells you, obey. They're in the airlock. Hold your crystal firmly. And don't be afraid. We'll get out of this. I'm not afraid, Comer. Well, I hardly expected you back so soon, Commander. Hello, Comer. Well, I'm surprised to see you looking so well. I feel much better since Siler left and Perkins is here. Well, that's fine. But what about your relay transmitters? Pluto can barely pick you up. You've got a beam 40 degrees west of Pluto that nearly burned out our meters. Yeah, we tested it when we came in. I want an explanation, Colmar. Very well. We are diverting the power of this space relay station to more important matters. What's more important than your duty, relaying official messages? I'm afraid you'll never know. Come with me, Commander. You're a little confused, aren't you? You take orders from me, remember? I said, come with me. <clears throat> Follow me. They must be space-happy, Commander. And what are those little bottles they're holding? Coma. Perkins. What's in those bottles? They are crystals. Crystals from another universe. Now come. Come, Commander. Commander. Something funny is happening. I, I, I can't take my eyes off those crystals. Follow me into the generator room. Happy, try to look away. They've got our reactions controlled somehow. The crystals are getting brighter. That's, that's about all I can see. Walk up to the generator. Touch the connections. Then you will know what we are doing with all the power. Happy, don't touch it. I, I can't hold back. Reach out your hand. It is not I, but our masters of Zaldebren who command you. Reach out your hands. Take the power connections in your hands. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. But first, this is Commander Corey and Captain Dick Tufel reminding you that pulling up to your breakfast table is like pulling up to a filling station. Give them our example, Dick. Right. A jet cycle has just pulled into a filling station to get its tank filled. The man has it filled with ordinary fuel. Listen. Not much go in that jet cycle, is there? But now listen to that same jet cycle filled with super fuel. Man, that cycle's roaring like a rocket now because it's supercharged with super fuel. Same thing is true of you, gang. To get going in the morning, you need super fuel, too. So get supercharged the way Buzz Corey and all us space patrollers do. Eat a power breakfast with Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal made of rich whole wheat. Instant Ralston helps you to think fast. And act fast. So remember, gang... 
When you pull up to your breakfast table, it's just like pulling up to a filling station. You're there for fuel. Super fuel, so you can get supercharged. Uh, take a tip. Eat a power breakfast with instant Ralston and get supercharged. Get it today in the red and white checkerboard package. Good hot Ralston. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Seed Crystals of Zaldebran. Two mysterious crystals have found their way into the solar system from outer space. One crashed through the hull of a communications relay station in the Saturn orbit. The other landed on a Martian plane. Discovered millions of miles apart by two men who once were enemies, the crystals have brought the two men together in the space station, united in a weird project. Buzz and Happy, investigating failure of the relay station to operate properly, are under the strange power of the crystals. And the two space patrolmen seem powerless to resist their orders. One more step, cadet. Fight it off, Happy. I'm trying, sir. Follow the crystal. Reach out your hand and feel the surge of power you never felt before. You can leave this universe in a blinding blue-green flash of glory. Another inch, cadet. No, Happy. No! My crystal! And there's yours, Perkins. Now get away from the generator, Happy, quickly. All right, Commander. Get your hands up. Don't reach for your ray gun. Don't try anything, cadet. Good work, Perkins. Watch him. Don't let him get up. Right. Coma. Where did those crystals come from? From Zelda Brand. And they're the guiding force that will bring the United Planets conquerors here from the planets of our masters. Coma, you've been out in space too long. You almost had us touching those generators. But put up that gun. I'll see that you get medical attention and I won't bring any charges against you. That's mighty big of you, And uh, Look what happened to the crystals. When the containers broke, the crystals faded. They're just like ordinary lumps of quartz. Corey, I ought to fix you good. Hold on, Packard. Let's wait and see what the crystals say. They may have other orders. Lock Corey and the cadet in the empty compartment. We'll try to revive the crystal. Commander, how are we going to get out of here? Colmar and Perkins are completely out of their minds. Come here. Yes, sir. Put your ear close to this ventilator. Listen to them. The crystals are beginning to glow again. Yes. They revive quickly in the fresh solution. They're in a compartment at the other end of this vent. They said the crystals are giving off light again. Just listen. In a few hours, we can put them back in the modulator. This time, maybe we can get through the Zelda brand. I think the beam is weakened by the cosmic ray from the sun. If we could take this relay station out beyond the Pluto orbit... Oh, but how can we do that? There is one other person in the solar system who has found one of the crystals. He has helped me already by bringing me equipment I needed. Who is he? A very wealthy man on Terra, Zoltan Cephalu. If he can here with a powerful spaceship, we could quickly accelerate the relay station out beyond the Pluto orbit. Come away from the vent, Happy. Yes, sir. It sounds crazy, but those crystals just might be a contact from some other system. Well, at any rate, I've never seen crystals behaving like that before. Whether or not they're from another universe, they're dangerous in the hands of Colmar and Perkins. Have you got your miniature spacophone? Yes, sir. Good. We'll try to reach Major Robertson and have him pick up Zoltan Cephalu. If Colmar tries to contact Cephalu, we'll at least have evidence of a conspiracy. The crystals have revived enough to handle Corey and the cadet. And this time we'll be more careful. Mm. Unlock the door. Wait. Listen. That's right, Robbie. Hold Zephalu. And if he's got a peculiar crystal that gives out a violet light, take that too. Corey out. They got a space phone in there, a, a miniature. Quickly. All right, Corey. We'll just take that little space phone. Space phone? What space phone? Come on, hand it over. You'll get a worse clout than you did before. Uh, All right. Here you are. I'll fix this little device. There. Now let's see you contact anybody. Soon we will be carrying out the will of our masters, the rulers of Zaldebren. You really believe that stuff, don't you? If you were fortunate enough to sense the vibration of the crystals, you would believe it too. Colmar and I know things you'll never know. About a superior race of men. Far out among the stars. Yes. These crystals are seeds they have scattered throughout. When they find fertile ground and receptive life, 
They bloom and glow. And with our spaceophone equipment, we can transmit their pulsations back to Zaldebrand. Then our masters will know they can come here to a new home. Commander, what do you think? It makes no difference what the commander thinks. He's going to help us. Huh? How? We've got to move the space station before someone investigates. The commander's ship is connected to our airlock. We'll have him move Com Relay 4 to a better location. Now let's lock these two in here until we get our crystals. This time there must be no slip-up. What are we going to do, sir? And they're going to try to put us under the power of those crystals. If the crystals don't work, Colmar and Perkins still have our weapons. But if they think we're under the spell of the crystals, we may be able to catch them off guard after we're in the ship. Now, don't look directly at the crystals. And keep your eyes partly closed. Yes, sir. And pretend to be resisting with all your might. Come on. Follow the crystal into your ship. After me. That's it. Try to stall him, Happy. Hold back. I, I can't. My, my, my feet keep moving in spite of all I do. Come on. Don't fight it. It's no use. That's it. Now close the inner hatch. Take your usual position at the control panel. Quickly now. Now watch the crystals and listen. You will start this ship gently at first so as not to pull away from the relay station. Is that clear? Yes. <laughs> now go ahead. Your usual procedure. Just a minute, Commander. That's the space phone you just turned on. Major Roberts. Don't try to enter him. If I could only move my hand. <laughs> Look at him. He's straining every muscle to turn on the microphone. Major Roberts and the Commander Corey. I've tried to reach you for 20 minutes. Here's the message in case you can't acknowledge. Zoltan Sepalu has been captured. Oh. Sepalu had us completely in his power until I found the crystal. Then we grabbed Sepalu without any trouble. Repeat, Major Roberts... Turn that off! We've got to get away from here quickly. Corey, start the ship. Stand by to fire rockets. Half G acceleration. Standing by, sir. One half G. Fire rockets. Perkins, is the space station holding to the ship? Seems to be. From what I can tell through the viewport. Corey, increase our velocity gradually. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Set a course 40 degrees west of Pluto. 40 degrees west of Pluto? That's it. Uh, they're like automatons. Look at them. They're completely under the power of the crystals. It'll take us several hours to get beyond Pluto's orbit. But by then, we should be able to send signals to Zaldebran. Then what about Corey and the cadet? Their usefulness will be over. We will dispose of them. How will we get back? Don't worry about that. There are supplies for weeks in the space station. We will calmly await the arrival of our masters from Zaldebran. Correct course, one and a half degrees west. One and a half degrees west. Three degrees high. Three degrees high. Happy, are you under control? Under control, Commander. When I give the word, move quickly, rush them. As steady as you go. Yes, sir. Now. Get back to your control. Give me that crystal, Colmar. Let go of that crystal, Perkin. I've got one of them, Commander. Here's Colmar's. Hold it. All right, Colmar, stand back. I've got this ray gun on you. Corey, you fool. You've only temporarily broken the power of the crystal. Give them back. You know, that's an idea. We will give them back, but not to you. We'll fire those crystals out of the ship. That's the only way to break their control. Happy, quickly. Open the breach to the cosmic torpedo guns. All right. Breach open, sir. Put them in and close it. All right, Happy. Fire the torpedo. You... You shot the crystals out into space. Yes. Out towards Aldebaran. Or wherever they came from. Hey. Hey, I feel different. I can move my hands easily. Comer. What happened? Commander Corey and the cadet shot the crystals out into space. Yes, out where they'll never be found. At least by anybody in the solar system. Thank goodness. 
Uh, that's wonderful. Well, what are you so happy about, Colmar? I thought you wanted the crystal. They had some terrible power over me. Now it's broken. I'm free again. So am I. Commander, if you hadn't fought us, Colmar and I would have brought something horrible into the solar system. I don't know just what, but it wouldn't have been good. Half our space upon Robbie and give orders to blast that third crystal out of the solar system. Commander, Perkins and I are traitors. And we deserve whatever it's coming to us. But I'm glad it's over. A brainograph test will show whether you were acting under the influence of the crystals or your own free will. Well, I'm glad it's over. And I've got something to settle with you, Colmar. Oh, you have? Yeah. I'm going to punch you in the jaw for getting me court-martialed four years ago. I'd like to see you try no, you Hey, hey wait, break it up. Break it up. Now, let's not have any more of that. Hey, Commander, it was the crystals. See? See, with the crystals gone, they're enemies again. <laughs> and so, once again, Commander Corey's quick thinking and daring have prevented a disaster on the United Planets. But even now, events are taking place that may mean more danger for Commander Corey. And now, an exciting preview of next week's Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have landed on a small planetoid. At this moment, wearing their spacesuits, they're approaching the airlock of a prospector's cave where a criminal is believed to be hiding. Have your ray gun ready, Hap. I'll see if I can open the airlock. Right, Commander. Hey, where did that come from? Someone's firing at us. That one came from the other direction. The airlock won't open. We have no protection. Whoever's controlling those weapons can just keep firing till they get us. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Magic Space Pictures, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Baylor Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. And now, a word to mothers about the salad of the year. Peach Coronation Salad a brand new idea inspired by the crowning of England's lovely new queen. A salad that looks like a queen's crown studded with jewels. But the kind of a salad a man can go for. It's made with creamy cottage cheese and luscious canned cling peaches from California. Give your peach coronation salad that perfect touch. Serve with delicious rye crisp, those toasty wafers with a hearty rye flavor. Boy, what a way rye crisp has of making other foods taste their best. Mm. You will see the coronation salad featured in magazines and newspapers and in special displays at your grocers all during the month of March. And when you serve this colorful new salad, be sure to serve it with delicious rye crisp. For your figure's sake, make rye crisp your bread all the time. Only 21 calories in a double square. No waiting for the famous rye crisp producing plan when you buy rye crisp. It's printed right on the package. Remember, 